we'll call the regular scheduled meeting of the Harper City Council to order this time. We'll have a word of prayer to start off with. Well, again, we thank you for the everyday of life that you give to us. Thank you for the opportunity to serve. Uh, we just pray for your guidance as we make decisions tonight that would benefit the citizens of Hartford. And uh, we just thank you for the blessings that we enjoy each day. And just keep us mindful of those. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, do, next on our agenda is visitors. Are there any visitors that would like to speak to us tonight? Go ahead. Can you give me your I name? Eileen Morris. Eileen Morris. Okay. And what I'm presenting today is there's an alley on a piece of property. I have that on the agenda for new business tonight. If you, can you can wait, wait? till wait till then so we consider okay. I was going to present your okay. case before them tonight. Yes. Okay. I didn't recognize you. I'm sorry. You want to talk to us? <laughs> Are you? If you want me to be a visitor, I will. <laughs> I think that we had spoke earlier about the trailer, travel trailer that we were talking about on the, um, for a meal break, a meal of Yeah. So I don't know if you all had discussed that any longer about that being there in the city limits, which I, you know, I think we were against the regulations. Okay. So. Uh, Are we wait till after the board meets to make a decision on his appeal to the board or? Did he write anything? Did, yeah, I haven't heard anything else from I told him to send you a, a letter asking to be on the uh, agenda for your meeting. Well, that meeting will be the, the uh, 14th. That's what I told him. And I told, and I told him he probably wanted to talk to you all maybe even before me and our board because my board's going to read the ordinance to him, which I have a copy of that here, which states, you know, you cannot just right. pull one into the city limits and hook it up to your city right. you know, yeah. utilities, which sure. is what they've done, but there's circumstances he's not well. Right. What she's referring to is uh, Neil Renfro, of course, has had some surgery and he's still recuperating from uh, health issues. And while he's not able to pastor his church, he's uh, they had their the nomination has evangelists that comes around to fill in the, the pastor's role while somebody's incapacitated, and they've invited this evangelist come in. He has a, they all come in in travel trailers, uh, and they have it hooked up to their uh, fellowship hall. And it's been there probably for, I'm going to guess it's been there for a month, probably. I didn't know it had been there that long. I think it's been there quite a while. Yeah. It's longer than two weeks. What's the new few weeks? The location's on Church Street. I can't tell you the exact number there. And so um, what he's asked is for some kind of an allowance of variance uh, concession while he's recuperating for that evangelist trailer to remain there. If it doesn't, then that evangelist trailer would have to go out to the county park and uh, have to stay out there during the duration of the time until Neil recuperates. I've, we've talked quite a bit. Uh, there was some question about the time. She didn't have a problem with maybe leaving it there for two weeks, which is longer than they normally allow trailers to stay. But uh, you can come on up. Well, I'm just going to hand this. You might want to rest and look at yeah. the section there. I brought the section that's on the bottom. Uh, we're showing that I can't do anything about it because, you know, I would if I could. Right. Uh, but your ordinance is not going to allow it. Right. And I've already had people remove those trailers yeah. um, numerous times. And there are other reasons why people would do that, like... Mm -hmm. Ill parents, yeah. parents, uh, you know, that need to move in next door, somebody keep an eye on them, or people move in next to their parents where they keep an eye on them, things like that. Now that what you're referring to right there is is uh, uh, it's allowed under what you would call conditional use, and that's for a trailer set up with its own utilities. You have to have its own tap. It has to have everything, which these do not. Right. Uh, and those are allowed yearly with the doctor's excuse and they have to come in and reapply every year to me so that's totally different than this but he needs yeah. to know because the new church that they're building they're going to have it in the plans to have these trailer hookups in that building you know so he needs to you know so uh, the 
the trailer had to move out to the park, I'm sure, but um, he was going to try to apply to the board for some type of a, a concession in the rules or have a rule change, you know, that's what he was asking for. So he's going to ask for it. That's a case he's going to plead. Um, but anyway, uh, if he's got to go out, he knows if he doesn't get that, he has to go out to the park, you know, like all the other travel trailers. So that's where we are right now. So you want to go ahead? Yeah, I was going to make a suggestion. This doesn't fall under the variance. It doesn't fall under conditional use, which is usually what I try to work everything under if possible. And then get a, a set time on it and say, you know, you're here this long and then you have to comply. Well, on these, I never, never do that with these travel trailers. There's no... Why you no allowance for them for at all? It. I mean, there's none because they don't ever. You, you just don't want it ever to start because then you can't get a handle on That's it. That's right. You can't keep in control of it at all. So, I don't have anything to offer him other than the fact that I thought I would talk to the city and see if the city wanted to offer him something, which saying he could. Which I talked to him. I said, I'll just let you have two more weeks anyway. Yeah. I said, let me tell you, I can. I will. But do the that. city and rules. It's. Yeah, and he said, well, okay, and then he talked with you, and he talked like he just needed a lot more than two weeks, and I, oh, yeah. he's, he hadn't he's told looking, me that. Yeah, he's looking Six at another days. surgery, okay. and he, it may be as much as two months before, so. Well, he didn't mention that to me. I do have a question. So, has he applied to the board? Not the board? There's Not nothing yet. to apply for. Okay. It yeah, doesn't fall under any of our regulations. Well, I, I mean, with... All due respect, though, once you all pass your planning and zoning ordinance and give the authority to the planning board, the city kind of loses jurisdiction to make that decision. No, because it says it's up to the city. In there the, is no, the there is no allowance for that. They'd have to right, change I don't the rules. Offerings, what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, that's why I came here today to see if there's something else that somebody can do. I told him. I said normally I tell all of these persons. When you come in for a week and you're staying with your mom and dad or something, I'm not going to turn my eye away from it and not see it. But I said, when you stay longer than that, then I'm going to have to have you move. And I'll tell him to go out to the park. Well, I think that his problem with this is partially he's paying for this evangelist, I think. He, he, he's paying for the evangelists and they can't afford to pay for the camping. I think the camping has been taken care of. Okay. There is a source of funding to provide for the camping fee, so he's not going to have to cover that. If he goes out to the park? If yeah. he goes out to the park. Well, then why well, wouldn't he just do that? Uh, no because so they'd like to get it for nothing. Well, there's also so many full hookups at the hook park. Hookups is what the problem is out there. Well, it wouldn't be. Uh, they, uh, sure all of the sewer it. hookups are gone. They are They're right now? Mm -hmm. It would have to be, he'd have to use his camper Right, and then the you'll well, right, right, yeah. right, you know, right. or whatever it was. Yeah. Which would be doable, I'm sure. Sure it is. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm for wrong. I'm for one. I mean, I sympathize with their problem. Yeah. And I understand what they're talking about. But I have to strongly disagree with any motion that we would we would accept something like that because we're opening a door that we can't close. I mean, it's like a lot of other things, and that's how we've gotten into trouble before. Yeah. As well, they've been a long-time citizen, and this and that. And I just, you know, I, I hate to even think that we'll entertain it. Yeah. Well, that's I why, I, want, a, that's I, why I wanted you all to know that I don't really feel like I have anything to offer him, and I know my board would yeah. ask me, and they'd ask me to pull that, what y'all pulled right here that says no. Yeah. And... Uh, so I thought well, maybe you all would have some other ideas. Can, but now I that can. I realize he's not going to have to pay that extra fee for them to sit out there, I think probably he... Mm -hmm. somebody, somebody else, a benefactor, is going to pay Yes, care of that. they will. Okay. But I can call Neil tomorrow and just have him to move the to yeah. that, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Of course, he can still go to the 14th of the board meeting if he writes the letter and asks to be on the agenda. But uh, I can go ahead and have him ask, you know, have the evangelists move out there to the park. And well, he needs to know, too, that even if if Nancy should approach the board about, or the city council about changing the regulation, you're talking a good six months <laughs> to get that through the system. <laughs> I mean, and there's not a, an easy way to say, oh, we're just going to amend this today. Yeah. 
Which is not something you want in man. No. You don't want that in anyway. On the subject of these travel vehicles and everything, I know that the city's been contacted regarding code enforcement because apparently we do have some others in the city that people are residing in. On well, I haven't had anybody in them right now. I watch okay. them and they move out of them and then before you know it, maybe they're back in them and uh, stuff. But yeah, they have to fall under code enforcement. They have to go out. They have to leave. They need to go Well, better. right now I think... Uh, I think the question is because of the code enforcement under the ordinance of this, you're the administrator under these particular ones. So I guess the question that has been brought to me is he wants to know, does he need to refer those to you so that you can go and inspect on them? That, when it comes to enforcement and like that, I'm to, I'm to ask the police department and the code yeah. enforcement okay. and all that well, stuff, I, right? I think there was a little bit of disconnect. with wasn't right. sure which ones are what. So. Because normally, just like the last one that I had, it hadn't been that long ago, I wrote him a letter. I always write him a letter before I go to anybody else. And uh, they got back in touch with me quickly to say, we're not living in it. You know, uh, we do have lights on in it and stuff. And I said, if you're just keeping a refrigerator and all like that, I said, but when you leave it open with the doors open and the steps down and all that stuff, everybody's going to assume you're in it. Yeah. So, I, you know, I worked it that way. So I always send a notice first. And then whenever I would refer it to codes, I would send them to copy that letter where I'd already notified them. Now, if you want me to do it a different way, I'll just have you tell me. I, I think there was just a, some confusion as to which mm -hmm. steps were first and, and, and yeah. whatnot. So I'll I'll pass that along to him. To well, that might not be the right step. So you well, just think, tell me. Well, we've talked before <laughs> about looking at some of these ordinances about the enforcement side of things. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so you and I need to get together about some other matters. Yeah. Which was another thing that I was going to talk about tonight too, as well as getting into that and me getting a hold of Brad again and and uh, Jennifer. I just sent her another notice, and she has she's been in trainings in different places until I can't get her, you know, get yeah. with her. So I sent her a thing that I'm just going to ask everybody to come on the 14th to the next meeting, like at probably 6 o'clock or something, the judge executive, and, and just invite everybody, even if they can't come over there for some kind of a speech to get going on about funding because everyone's going to have to sign a contract as to what you plan on doing to support the comprehensive plan and the changes. Is that March 14th? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm going to be out of town, so I need to get with you probably before then. Well, okay. Well, I don't. Ha I haven't set that down yet because I just sent her the uh, thing. I did ask. Uh, I was going to ask you, and I'd already ask Paul, and he said if it's night, he'd work it in. So uh, I haven't heard from uh, Chase. I haven't got a hold of him or or David yet. So I don't have to do the 14th. Okay. Well, let's, let's get another day. Yeah, let's just toss some dates and see what works out for everybody. Okay. Well, then I'll just get with you and. It's, that's what's my problem. I haven't had it where I've got where I can get grad over here at the same time that I can get. To catch up, I realize we got a new a new council. This has kind of been something that's been a little ongoing. Is um, the city has, you know, our our ordinances for planning and zoning, including our zoning areas and maps and everything in the city, haven't been updated in several several years. 1991. And, yeah. Yeah. And there's some significant issues that have arisen because of the changes that we've um, mm -hmm. experienced as a county. So what we've done is we've invited Grad to come over and give us quotes on how to update and renew our policies. I'm all about that. But it comes at a cost. So Of course. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one of the things that we're trying right. to get with them to figure out what basically the biggest bang for our buck. Because so. at the same time we're looking at twenty to twenty five thousand just a comprehensive plan. If you're gonna do enough to get something done and it's gonna have fallen at twenty at least. But and that doesn't have anything to do with redoing the ordinance and stuff. Which is no, I mean no, it's, it's going to be all inclusive to everything. Mm -hmm. It's a totally but, different ball yeah. game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going <laughs> to. Okay. So, but that's what I had to say. Thanks, so, ma'am. And is there anything? Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, you did you have any yet. more comments you wanted to make on on uh, what you're working on to, with no, me or with the board or anything? So while I'm here. Not right now. Okay. Has group called you? Called you? I haven't heard from anyone. Okay. That means they're still on the don't, don't leave. Ms. Ms. Morris, I'm yes. going to ask you to yes. go ahead and you make your presentation you so you'll have to sit through all of our meetings tonight. Uh, and she'll need to have some input in it, what you want to propose. So. Okay. Yes. What we're wanting to do on 1308 Taylor Avenue, 1306 is the property that's connected, <clears throat> and their mobile home burnt. And so to be able to get another mobile home in and to set it facing Taylor Street, there's supposed to be an alley down through here, which we don't even know where it's at. But we want a, a petition that we could close that alley because it's never been used. They said it was for 
back in the years for ice delivery or something like that. But to be able to set that mobile home there, we were asking the city if they could close that alley. Okay. What she's, what she's got is two properties on both sides of the alley. They own both sides of the, the alley. And what they're asking is, if we close the alley down to the limit of their property, then they can put that trailer in and have it facing Taylor Street, you know. Uh, it's 110 feet down through there that we would close. It's an alley that is like a lot of alleys we, in town. We don't know that there's an alley there. It's, it's grass. It's been mowed for years, but probably served a purpose in delivering coal or ice at one time. Uh, it's not needed anymore. We've closed alleys before. Uh, this one does not require anything more than them paying for this to, this property to be deeded over to them. It's not like we've got to divide it and half goes to to one owner and half goes to another owner, but they would have to pay for the deed uh, change over from Correct. to be inclusive of that. See that alley. Be, the closure would be by operation of law. It would just automatically right. revert since it was it was in place and plotted like sure. that when the city was sold right. off. Um, sometimes people want deeds and they don't understand that by operational law the city doesn't provide that so to right. actually get a deed to the property that would have to be a separate expense but the um, so we just take our responsibility out of it and <laughs> well in order to do it you have to pass an ordinance and you have to give notice and have all adjacent landowners sign off they agree right. to the closure but these there's only them there's just no them. adjacent landowners That's so right. yeah and see the alley used to run straight across Taylor going up the hill there. Yeah. There are several of these throughout the city on the right. whole list, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would entertain motions to close the alley and then entertain any discussion regarding that motion. So I will say that in the past, anytime we've done alley closures, we always reserve any uh, an easement um, along that way for any utilities or city um, matters that need to be installed either now or in the past or in the future. So well, that's going to be tough if they got a trailer sitting on it. <laughs> right. I, I mean, it's like crossways across. We may the need to go around the trailer or something like that. We may need to. I just, you know what you're saying mm -hmm. that if we ever need to cross mm -hmm. that, we'd sure, like sure. to know that you're favorable for us to have right. an easement across right. that property somewhere. Right. I'll make a motion to close the alley. Okay. Thank you. Okay, There's no outlet to it either. I second it. All right. Any discussion regarding the motion? It doesn't, just to put a note on the file, that the motion itself doesn't actually close the other. We'll have to do that by ordinance. Right. Can go ahead and get that prepared. So this motion is to create an ordinance to close it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any discussion? Okay. All in favor of creating the ordinance, uplifted hand. Thank you. Motion's carried unanimously. So we get everything taken care of now. She'll prepare okay. the deed work and lead it over to you with okay. the stipulation that an easement somewhere in there that okay. doesn't affect your. If you want a deed, it'll be an ordinance to the city. But if you want a deed, you're welcome to contact my office once it's completed. Well, as long as it's in the city, it shows it's been done. That's fine. Okay. Okay. So thank thank you. you for coming. Thank to you. Us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I will also say that they are replacing this with a single wide mobile home. And ah uh, yes, and that we have spoke right. about this. And yep. Because of that being a home that burned in December, mm -hmm. she came to me after that. And you can replace if it's not been six months. So at this point, and I told her it had to be newer than a 2002, which would have the HUD code on it. That would be the only way right now. And so that was all taken care of. And it so needs to be okay. done as quickly as possible. Right. <laughs> well, we just wait until you're okay. Then. Okay. So That's we a separate issue. Yeah. Yeah. Because she came to me soon enough, then, you know, you're automatically working on it at that time. So I wanted everybody to understand. That's why that, that could go back in there. So it's better okay. that way that everybody knows it ahead of time before it goes in there. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll be in touch with you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other visitors that would like to speak tonight? Okay, go ahead and state your name and tell us. Uh, go ahead and tell us what you're. 
I'm Mike Leach. I live in Iron Mountain, and the reason I'm here is because I had my water shut off this week without my knowledge for a bill that I didn't know existed because I got a late fee and wasn't notified and was shut off within 10 days of the late fee. Um, <coughs> now, can I go ahead and explain what the situation is? They pay by electronic check, and uh, City of Hartford can't accept electronic right. checks. It has to go to the bank, and the bank has right. to print a uh, paper check, and then we get the paper check and deposit it. Well, by the time we do all that, it's the 15th before right. the money is going into our account. So our computer says this is a late payment. Right. And so that's why we had the problem here. Right. You know, that had happened twice before, but because the former administrations were a little more lenient in what they would allow as far as, like, they they didn't really show up, and that's why we just now discovered. Yeah. Okay. So, so you go ahead with your presentation. So, so it was late. I, I didn't know that it was late. But, you know, because according to us, we paid it beforehand. Well, anyway, so it's late. Uh, a week later, our check gets cashed, so we assume everything's good to go. No notification, you know, that you're short because you've got a late fee associated with us now. Nothing. Now, they did say they tried to give us a courtesy call, but the courtesy call is not a notification, especially if nobody answers or the call doesn't go through. Well, I come home from work. My water's turned off and with a lock on it. It's after 4 o'clock. I can't call anybody. And as far as I'm aware, I got a bill that has this amount on it and a check that has this amount on it. It's taken care of. That's not a great way to run a public utility. It, you should never be shutting anyone off for a late fee. When the bill is paid in full, the late fee should just be rolled over to the next month. I mean, I think if you check every other utility in the surrounding area, they will not shut you off for a late fee. As a matter of fact, I work it on you. We won't shut you. We won't roll a truck for less than seventy-five dollars. So, I mean, I understand you guys are much smaller than you, but it's still a bit crazy to shut people off without notifying them over a late fee they don't know exists. Okay, let me go ahead and, and I'll stand up for Sarah because Sarah spends. Uh, when we do have late fees, she calls people to let them know that they are late. And on the 25th, when we're about to cut them off, she does call people on the 24th and let them know that, you know, today is the last day before we have to cut, shut you off. Uh, we just have to go by the ordinance. And the ordinance would have to be modified by this group or a new ordinance written regarding, uh, you know, the rules. Uh, far as um, like they see, we expect money to be in by the 10th. Right. All right. When the money's not there by the 10th, we give them two weeks with a penalty. And if it hasn't come in during that two-week time, then we shut it off. And that's what the ordinance, the way the ordinance is written. I think we need to revisit the ordinance. Okay. Well, well I, th I think we've got more than that. We, we need to... Also, last because Mr. Was, Leach is not the only one that could. I've had my water shut off without notice. You do it electronically, like nope. he does. Well, then you know. Nope. Nope. I just didn't get it. Oh was well, you were late. I've been here nine years. Well, so I've lived here all my life, and they cut mine off. So I know, <laughs> but it's still. Yeah. If I can interrupt. Sure. I, I work a utility. I've worked a utility for fifteen years. Um, this is. The only place I've ever run across this, seen anything like this. I talked to people in billing at multiple places that I've worked at and ones I currently work at, and they were astounded that this is the case. And not only that, I know you guys are not governed by PSC, but if you look at PSC, you're supposed to give five days written notice. And you're going to have a hard time justifying that if it was to ever become a big ordeal that you had to give a written notice. Even though you're not governed by them, they're going to say, well, the state requires written notice for a water shutoff. Why are you guys not doing it? So I'm just saying, in the future, that might come up, even though you're not t technically regulated by them. So that's really all I had for. Okay. I mean, I've heard stories of people paying all but 
a dollar and something because they just didn't do their math right and it was shut off because it was a dollar. Instead of just rolling that dollar over yeah. to the next bill, it's shut off. So I don't agree with that. Well, well I, I have different opinions. Well, well that's why we there's, that's why yeah. there's more than one of us up there. Yeah. <laughs> We have all kinds of circumstances yes, that right. are all Just different exactly. situations. Uh, we'll have people who consistently do. It. Well, I understand <coughs> the difference between consistency and once in a lifetime, and with, with the same result. Yeah. No, uh, the one comment I'd like to make is uh, the city does offer ACH. I and signed up for it this morning. Okay. <laughs> I'm good. And it also, it also like to let everyone know that when uh, individuals are going online through their banking website and paying payments, the bank accepts no responsibility for the late payment because that is subbed out to a company. Right. That company will take no responsibility <coughs> as well for the <coughs> payment. And they're really the only avenue, if you're going to make sure that that payment's going to be there by using the online banking, is you have to pay it in advance from anywhere close to that, that due date. Yeah. And they're, and I see that here because they come in a different envelope and there'll be a stack of them. And it's like those individuals have no idea what they're risking. Mm -hmm. That's because right. Because an ACH is basically, the, for the most part, about the same thing as your online banking. Mm -hmm. And at least if you do an ACH through the city, you do know for sure that there's never going to be a late fee. And so I just want right. to, as a public notice, the yeah, online banking is very risky if you're doing something time sensitive because right. no one accepts responsibility for the late payment. After finding out that was the case, <laughs> I, I don't disagree that it was late. I didn't know that was how it was working, and I don't disagree that it was late. I don't disagree that there should have been a late fee associated. <laughs> My main problem is I was not notified, given in, in, and I was shut off over $16 late fee that I didn't know existed. And I, won't, and, and I won't say that you weren't notified, but I do know that we have numerous, numerous accounts that the number is not a working number because often people have disconnected their I home think phone. Checked, though, and, you're, and, you're, and I'm not, I'm not talking about you specifically, but for the record, and the people do not just they get a new cell phone number. You know, the last thing they're going to do is call City Carper and say, "Oh, could you change my number on my account?" You know, that just. Well, that being said, that is why the Public Service Commission says written notice. And that can be a door hanger, that can be in the mail. We had a lady that shut off. She's away from here, but uh, we tried to call this number. She said, we haven't used that number since 1990 or something like that, you know. So, you know, they try. They do try. I, I'm, I will say that. I don't think that the mayor and the ladies up front can do is follow the ordinance, you know. That's, and that's right. It's got to be this council's decision to to make adjustments or to make a new ordinance or whatever. So uh, it's up to them, whatever you all want to do. But I'd like the opportunity to review the ordinance before I kind of weigh in. Okay, I agree. So I can get a copy of that. And I, I the, of my opinion, I think the the issue with the timing and the late fee, I think it makes a lot of sense that. If the intent was there to pay the bill and the late fee happened after the bill was issued, which it normally does, if it rolls into the next bill, well, then they have to pay the entire next bill, at which time, you know, mm -hmm. they, they still have the good intent. And if they've paid and you've deprived them of property, that's theft. So that's kind of, but I, I'd like to see the ordinance, see how we it's kind of written. And ask because if the, the intent is there to pay, it is. And it's a timing issue. Um, you know, at the end of the day, the 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 city still receives the 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 late fee the late fee payment. You know, and it's it's up to the the consumer to give ample time to to get the money in. Um, so it really does still fall on them. But so we want to just. I think that if we could get a copy of the ordinance and let everybody table study it, table, table, table it until table table we. Table that's table. right. That way we can all be on the same page for, with the ordinance and we can make our recommendations. Actually. Yeah, I don't want to say, hey, we need to adjust the ordinance if it's pretty Especially if we hadn't read the ordinance all the way through mm -hmm. because we just got here, but we're going to. Okay. 
Thanks for coming in, Mike. If you can be excused if you or you can stay and listen to all this. It's going to take place for the next two and a half hours. <laughs> Thank you for coming Thank in. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you, ma'am. You want to give us your name? <laughs> My name is Jody Ashby, former occupant of this seat right here. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know uh, we're going to try to be at the, the city council meetings as much as possible. Whenever I say we, I mean Ohio County Economic Development Alliance, either myself or Chase. Um, and just so that we can stay in tune with what's going on with the cities, uh, we collaborate closely with the Economic Development Committee for Hartford. Um, but if you guys have any ideas, I can update you on what we're currently doing. Just to give you an idea, we have a coding boot camp, in case you're not aware of that, for web developers that CEDA is funding through a grant. Uh, we've got eight um, students in the next cohort that starts next Monday, hoping to develop um, an avenue for people to work remotely, to work from home or work from the hub or whatever for employers all over the United States and, and foreign as well. But that's just one thing that we're doing. So throwing around any ideas for workforce development, for economic development, for tourism, um, that OCDA might partner with uh, either the EDC or the council or whoever on. So I'll leave my contact information with you guys. And Do you want to talk about those two grants we've mentioned today? At sure. Unless you would rather. Go ahead. Okay, so one of the grants that we uh, met about this morning is the Crumb Rubber Grant. It is for waste tire recycling, to promote waste tire recycling. I'm going to set this down so it stops making noise. Um, and what OCDA is requesting that grant to be used for is to pave the old roadbed from 69 into the Ohio County Park. The idea is to tie the city of Hartford and the city of Beaverdam ultimately into uh, the park and to assist with the Trail Town project. So part of that um, certification, Trail Town certification, requires you to tie all of it together with the city so that you can bring people into the downtown areas. That's the whole purpose. Um, so and it's to, to pave the road. We want to from pave out the here path. on 1543 all the way through, or just the no, other no. way. We're paving the old roadbed. It's not a road anymore between the property of Sphinx and who else? Maddox. Yes. Um, so that it's a bike trail. So it connects. We're going to connect it to. Oh, it's not to pave the road. It's a bike right. trail. It's oh. the old roadbed. We want to pave it with crumb rubber. Uh, well, pour in place, crumb rubber, whatever you want to call it. Help me. It, it's essentially a rubberized asphalt product. Yeah. Too. yeah. It's not asphalt um, modified, but it is crumb rubber. It looks like asphalt. It's and like that. If you've ever been to Smothers Park in Orange and it's the same yeah, it stuff. Like it's soft stuff, but it, this one's a little harder uh, to yeah. help with the biking and, and Yeah, general. it'll have some uh, gravel or... Give us a little more strength yeah. and wearability. So that's what we're going to submit for. The I'm not sure that they still know where the, the road is that you're talking about. Uh, well, if you, I'm not as good as with this. If you leave as Wayland as and you go um, on 69 back towards the Howe County Park. Right there where the white fence ends. Where Country Club Park. Lane starts. Mm -hmm. if there's an old roadbed that actually runs down next to that fence between yeah. the Maddox's farmland and Spinks's property. Yeah. And it goes back and it actually curves around to the park. Yeah. Used to be a gravel road there years ago. Mm -hmm. I don't remember yes. that. But yes. <laughs> it was. it is an old roadbed, yes. School bus used to run it. So this stuff you can pour directly on top of gravel. Um, so that's what we're submitting for. We also um, just tossed around some ideas for the cities to submit for other things and um, for the park to submit for something. A so a AARP had a grant to... Uh, yeah. So AARP grant is the community challenge grant. It's more focused on any activity um, or project that will include um, intergenerational people. So if you can tie together 
the age gaps, then um, your project is going to get attention. Also, um, I haven't researched it yet, but the the idea is to be a quote unquote livable community. I don't know what that really means yet, um, but this grant they tell us will be will get more focus if we include projects that will make us closer to a livable community. So basically what they want us to do is, um, I'll just give you an example idea. Uh, Bo and I were talking about at the park, updating the park to include walking trails and equipment that seniors could use so that it's not just a playground for kids, but also includes the older generation too. So that's just one idea, but that's an example. So that's two of the grants that we're working on currently. But um, there's a lot of other things that that we do at OCDA. The idea is really just to benefit and increase the quality of life for Ohio County, period. So it can be a broad range of things. So if you guys have ideas or anything you want to discuss with us, um, let me know, and I'll leave you my card. And that's it. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Here. I'm just going to give this to you. You can pass it down. There's extra there. Thank you. You're welcome. Nancy, if you want to go, you don't have to stay. I'm just going to say that I appreciate everything you all do. So uh, thanks for listening to me. <laughs> and uh, I do want to, you know, work on a lot of things with you. So uh, as far as the uh, plans for our comp plan and our ordinances and everything, and stuff and the maps, they all got to be redone. I uh, know I'm going to be right in your face a whole lot, so <laughs> it's doing me up. But uh, uh, also, I was wondering if you're, uh, the persons that can help me more, I would like to have an ordinance maybe updated where your workers that go out and read the meters and, and different persons like that, when they do see a building going up or they do see someone living in a, a structure that they're not supposed to be in. Right now, we're having a little problems with, I had some little buildings go up in a certain area that persons decided to rent out in their backyards. Yeah. And you can't do that, you know. Uh, so just things like that because I'm not going to see them all the time to know that they're new or not and some of them that are going in are not new anyway so you'd think they've been there forever uh, but I'd appreciate that and I, maybe we can even get an ordinance where we figure out who's responsible when I'm supposed to be doing it first or somebody else or, I think it needs a complete revamp and overhaul yeah. unfortunately at this point so because I've never really had anybody tell me so you can tell me when you want it done I'll do it Maybe <laughs> best I can anyway. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. I'll be hollering at you. All right. Uh, All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Take a look at your meeting minutes. Uh, we have two to consider. I'll just have one special call. How about the? Uh, I guess do we approve the? Hmm. Hmm? Head to 14. Yeah, yeah, they were. All right. Uh, you have the special call meeting minutes of January 17th there. The only thing I noticed, didn't we appoint someone to the wastewater treatment plant board? Uh, wastewater yeah. treatment board? Yes. Their name is not on this listing, is it? If it is, I missed it totally. I think there's the whole long, is it, did I leave it out on that long list? Yep. Had, had we already appointed Jeff on another meeting? Oh, I thought he was included. I'm sorry. He might but have been appointed right. at another meeting. I don't know. Oh. We'll check back and see. Let me double check and see okay, if that's in the prior minutes. All right. So that makes living at home hard if Jeff <laughs> If we ignore Jeff. <laughs> Okay. I will double check that to make sure. Well, I, I, I know his name was mentioned, yeah. and I I just assumed oh, yeah. that yeah. from that time that he was included in this, and I didn't know for sure. Can I say something else about the water, too? Yes. You got trouble with your meter, don't call and tell them. Got trouble what now? If you have trouble with your meter or anything, yeah. don't call them, buddy. Mine was leaking, so I called down here and told them. And I got a bill for four hundred and some dollars for tearing it up. For tearing it up. Mm -hmm. For the tampering? Yeah. Leroy brought it up there. 
mean, that's... Well, they made it wasn't her mobile. Well, I mean, I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sure it came from me, but I don't, yeah. I don't remember the name. Okay. And Leroy took it back to you, and it come to, he got it to $113, which I didn't feel like I owed that, but I just paid it to be done with it. Okay. I mean, if there was a if there was an ordinance and they told me that somebody had violated, I don't go out and personally investigate. <laughs> <laughs> it was leaking, so I called. My leader's leaking. We did that on their side. Mm. We did that December twenty seventh. Oh, now. okay. So you just mean yeah. okay? I I recall that then. <laughs> I'm going to ask that lady something she didn't know. Right. Give you our number. Yeah. If you've had time to look them over, I'd entertain a motion to accept these minutes as approved. I'll make a motion. Okay. Second. Second. All right. Any discussion? Any clarification, additions, deletions? If not, then all in favor of accepting minutes, second to 10. Thank you. Motion carried. All right, Tara, what have you got for us? Uh, no okay. Uh, take a look at the financials. If you have any questions, but you have a, um, a second set of financials that are, we're trying to break in a new. Lisa wasn't here when these things were put together, and so breaking in a new one, and we're going to find some bugs every now and then, but we got to straighten out this report, so. We have a list of the uh, tax account. This one and the one we got back here at the same time? No. We're going to have it. Which one we have it for them? Yeah. This is well, the most a, current one. Uh, yeah. I think that you'll notice on the side that's in the packet. Uh, mm -hmm. like cart permit. You did the same okay. thing. Okay. This guy was on twice, uh, period. They can run it tonight, time of day, or they anything. See, this They're not number is the same as dark. this. I've seen them this in town. Same as this. It's like the only one running after dark. These are different. On the I'm pretty sure the ordinance is on the one they changed. Yeah. And I have seen them with no lights running after dark. What we've talked about briefly was, I know that we had mentioned uh, stickers for the golf carts. Uh, probably what we need to do is just have a unified system of issuing stickers 1st of July that run until June 30th. That way we can uh, keep up with who's current, who's not current, you know, so as far as the permissible license to be on the street so that's what we've talked about uh, that's what do we do forces. now just whenever they come in or yeah basically okay. and I'm not sure that that we keep them current yeah. you know yeah. I think that's a good idea that we need an ordinance for that or we have an, a we change. have an existing so we'll need to amend so amend it okay so you're looking to change change it or add a sticker requirement that's the only way to enforce uh, it because you can't. Well, and, and, and a timely one them. that everyone's due Probably. July the first. I think it's in there, but you just unfortunately people don't. Yeah. Renew. And we're not doing anything about it. I don't think it's. I don't think July it is either. First, if I come in today. They're good for a year no. from today. So a, a year from issue. So you want to you want a deadline? That's like, not so difficult to sure okay. Does everybody pretty much do that? You want me to go ahead and make an, a motion to amend the ordinance concerning? I can just draft the one and bring it for the. For the yeah. Well, I didn't the know we had to have anything on them. Yeah, we can throw you in jail. You can. Yeah. Charge you four hundred dollars. Get the rest of that water bill. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to build this for all it's worth. <laughs> it won't just be the golf cart ordinance. I think we also have a UTV ordinance, do we not? So we'll be probably amending both ordinances. A vehicle, oh, a U oh, an off road vehicle. Well, we did utility task vehicles uh -huh. and golf carts, but they're two, they're two separate ordinances. I believe they fall under two separate statute authorities at the time. Well, UTV would still qualify to drive at night, right? Yeah. According Is to that the separate? I have to look at the ordinance. There's a lot of things in there they wanted to have kind of between the two, but a UTV is better outfitted normally. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I um, think. It normally has headlights and rollover bars and whatnot, mm -hmm. whereas the golf cart doesn't quite have Headlights. Mm -hmm. So the golf cart doesn't have to have them. No, but it can't operate at night, I don't yeah. believe. Yeah, after but dark. But the reason I'll, pull those, I'll pull those ordinances and I'll have it laid out so with the amendments so you all can see it. Well, we probably could, could put a stop to a lot of golf carts if we stopped kids from driving. Well, they aren't. It's only supposed to be operated by licensed drivers. Well, guess what? <laughs> you all write the ordinances. You're not the ones. I mean, any kids that got his training wheels off is driving a golf cart. <laughs> oh, we get them up my street a lot, and we're a dead end road. Yeah, the loop in my neighborhood too. I like to turn around in my yard. I went out there at ten o'clock one night because I had those drifters, mm -hmm. and I'm like, come on now, and it wasn't kids. It yeah, was, no, I know we get adults. adults too. Yeah. And I'm like, come they on. come from your neighborhood over to mine. <laughs> I'm a school teacher. <laughs> Any questions about the financials? No. And I'll make a motion to accept the financial report. All right. Is there a second? A motion. A second. All right. Any discussion? All in favor, up at the hand. Thank you. All right. Motion carried. Okay. The only old business that we would have would be the consideration of uh, Veolia's uh, presentation. Uh, we had tabled that from the last meeting, I think, to this meeting. They called me again. Okay. Uh, Mike, and we, we actually spoke at length this time, but and I told them the 10 year thing is probably not ever going to fly because we would still need many more months to look into details. But uh, I said maybe a five-year plan if you could work up some numbers that, to present to us. So if you guys wanted to give them time no. to, for a five-year plan. I don't think we should. I think we should pursue the That's method. That's a whole lot of money. Yes, it is. Well, well we don't know what that is. Let me just say that uh -huh. they did offer to cut it down to a five-year. Oh. Yeah. They did offer to cut out... Um, a half of an employee that they had in there for the water collection and distribution. Um, and I'm trying to think, I want to try to, they were make, willing to make some concessions as far as they would be cutting <coughs> things out of what they would. Right, even if to. we did the sludge stuff, that would be cut oh, out. Oh yeah, the sediment. And the so goods. they would just need more time to come back at us with a with yeah, a number to help us out. Back 000, I think. It gives us another option instead of it limit. We're, we got limited options. It just gives another option. That's to right. Look at. Yeah. Well, I we think can table we need it for to, another thirty days to let them come back at us with another. Well, I option. think we need to pursue the idea of these these automated reporting systems that the software. That, yeah. The software would belong to us and. Yeah, I had a I had a chance to go through the facility and, um, you know, just thinking about it, spending two hundred thousand dollars for them to come in and manage a system versus reinvesting that two hundred thousand dollars back into the plan in the city. It it seems like the the problems that we have are not to where they can't be solved, you know, internally. And I think I think we just need to take a stronger stance of you know, working with the teams here to get that going forward. And, you know, a year from now, if they haven't made any progress to get things under control or if it's six months, then uh, we maybe, maybe we could consider somebody else. That was just kind of my thoughts. Well, we can even look at incentive pays to help make things succeed too somewhat with money. And I'm, I really, of course, I'm an old woman and I know it, but. I didn't say that. No, but you're thinking it. I didn't tell you. We don't have to Karen vote on told me. Well. But, but. We don't uh, have to vote on that, do we? No, you don't. We don't even need a motion, Jerry. You need no. to just sit down there. But, I, you know, I, I would like to give the city employees the ones who want to work, the opportunity to shine and give them something to work for because a lot of them have put in a lot of hours and it is Hartford's problem. And I think that 
with the right oversight and oversight the is oversight. exactly what the problem is. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. But I think that we have to, I think we need to address a whole lot before we just open the door and turn it over to somebody. Well, I'm not ready to open the door to anybody. I'm just saying mm -hmm. if we have me in compliance in 1993, well, there hasn't been oversight that was enforced because we well, keep no, kicking well, the Well, now that's road. not necessarily true. Yeah. Now, as far as <laughs> well, that's what we need to show, too, yeah, is, is the progress. Uh, the last well, uh, you know, these automated reporting mm -hmm. will tell a whole lot. Right. Oh, I'm willing to give it a shot. And, we're, uh, we're, the, yeah. we're the new faces in here, that's for sure. But uh, we we still have to do what we got to do and not kick a can down the road for another 18, 19 years. I'm not yeah, going to do true. that. Mm -hmm. So, George, how do, I mean, how does, how do we publicize the progress that's getting made? Well, we, we publicize when it doesn't. I know. You know, we have to print the, the EPA's demands that we print on there that we didn't pass, you know, our uh, quality and control uh, yeah. levels. Um, the last time, I'm waiting right now for this quarter's results uh, from our testing. Basically, Everything's good for us always, except for two basic problems, and that's the THM, the trihalomethanes, and the HAAs, which are the haloacetic acids. Those are the two things, the precipitates in the lines mm -hmm. where we've been borderline in the past. Now, I say borderline, it's not like we're way out of whack. It's just, it's supposed to be 0.06, we're like, 0 0.068, 0 0.065, something like that, 0.07. And the last time that we did, we were well under the regular, you know, the, the limit set by the EPA. I look for the this this quarter's to be also under the limits. Our biggest problem is in the summertime when it's warmer and uh, the chlorine is a little more active and creating the byproducts and so. But then you, you're evaluated over long term, over mm -hmm. the whole year, not just on each one. So, but if we can get you know three of them under, then the summer one that we sometimes expect to go higher. That doesn't mean we're still not trying to. I've got some things that we're working on that I think is really going to help us. Okay, and I'll make some presentation probably tonight to talk to you about some of those things. Uh, we are actively addressing it, and we know that there are things like the the uh, backwash lagoons. We know that they need to be cleaned out. Uh, we know that the basin, where it first comes in, that basin needs to be cleaned out. We know that. Uh, we think we can do it without a lot of extra effort and cost. You know? what, what is the plan to clean them out and the timeline? What, now? what is the plan to clean them out and the timeline? Well, one of the... One of our biggest problems is our large storage tank, mm -hmm. okay, the million gallon tank. We only utilize about 350,000 gallons a day. So you've got this new water coming in, mixing with the old water that's been in there for a long time. Mm -hmm. Okay, the chlorine's dissipated. Uh, we put a mixer in to help mix this and it is helping some but we don't need a million gallons of water okay so i've approached an engineer who worked with centertown on their tank he's in danville he's a professional engineer the second time around right uh, the second time around the second time around not the first time <laughs> yeah, not, yeah not their first fiasco <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, that was <laughs> but I've approached this engineer. He was recommended by Center Town, um, and I told him what our problem was: that we had too big a tank, and some things have been offered as possible solutions, such as filling it up with rock, pouring a concrete base, and just utilizing the part that we we need. You know, um, 
putting a floor in, a floor that's supported underneath. And that way you only using, you've got to have the height for the pressure, mm -hmm. but we don't need the volume. And he's come up with a plan, he says it's doable, that would cut down the capacity of that tank to 450,000 gallons. We use 350,000 a day. If we ever decide to sell water to someone, then we still would have the capacity with that tank, and the small tank has 125,000 gallons <laughs> in it. So we still have the capacity to be able to sell water if, if that opportunity ever arose. Right. But by having 450,000, you 350,000, we get better turnover out of our water. It cuts down on our loss of chlorine, the, the creation of the byproducts and things like mm -hmm. that. The project is about, he, th he estimates roughly about a $300,000 project, which we would have to go through grad, through the Water Management Council over there, get the okay from them, go through grad, and try to acquire grants and loans to mm -hmm. to do that project. But the people, the engineers tell tell me that, and the water plant people <coughs> say that would be a solution to a lot of our problems is to cut down on the problem created by having too large a tank. And then the solution for cleaning the lagoons? Uh, as soon as the weather clears up, yes, and so it becomes what we'd have to do there, there's two different lagoons side by side. We'd have to just drain one of them right. and clean it out. They want to do some work on some of the piping that's in the bottom of it, try to raise that <coughs> piping up a little bit where it's more effective. What I'm looking for is a timeline. Which oh. They know, because we, we've talked about it three times in a row. Yeah, that would uh, be more like a summertime right? project whenever okay. they could get in there without all the rain. and. Uh, so this summer, start up. A cleanup project. And of course, the uh, hopefully the uh, pre-treatment basin could be done. You know, as soon as it gets warm enough and, and things kind of right. settle down. You know, because it's under roof. We don't and with the lagoons cleaned out, explain the benefit of that for everybody. Here. Well, the filters, of course, they're filtering out all the sediment and the and the, the byproducts. The, mm -hmm. the precipitates that come from adding the uh, takes out the <coughs> total organic compounds uh, with the sodium permanganate and some of the other things that they add. Mm -hmm. It all ends up in this filter here. Of course, you got this media that the water goes through and this catches all this, and it had, you had to backwash that occasionally, you know, ever so often to to get all this excess. Uh, things that you've strained out of the water, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, it's flushed up to the lagoons, and then once it settles there, then that water goes back into the river. Mm -hmm. I think that's where it goes. <laughs> I'll say that's where it goes. <laughs> so there's not much else to play for it right. to go except he, back in the not going that, That's sewer, why I, I, no. I wish. <laughs> no, no, we're not. When we but, would, uh, that's why I wish when we talked about that, we would have water folks at the meeting as well because okay because uh, I can hear what we're talking about too because I like yeah I like talking about people when they're not here but uh, right but, but they are involved and in, directly involved um, but those are some problems there I've got something to present to you tonight that would is another step in that direction of trying to better monitor the use of our chemicals and okay. so it's just those kind of things right there that we're able to focus in on that we know that are a problem areas for us and try to find those solutions that, you know, that we can incorporate one at a time. And it's just kind of a lengthy process to right. do that. And, and it's the only reason why I keep bringing up the viola thing because they seem to have a solution tangible timeline for each one of those okay. and if they I, I'm pretty sure we had all in agreement that the 10 year thing is not something we would entertain I assumed I'm, and I know we we're not really supposed to assume but if they come back and hit us with a 5 year thing taking out the things that, that, that they discuss with mm -hmm. yourself and us doing the lagoon project uh, it might be something that we 
if nothing else, get some ideas from them during a presentation to give our guys. I don't know. Well, you know, if he's not going to work for him, to try to find no. oh. to try to find a job, Mary. I wonder what you're trying to find some no, kind of well, middle ground here. You know, we if we try a something for right. a year, year and a half, yeah. and if we don't get any improvements, well, we know where to find them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So I'm trying to find some kind of a sure. Mm-hmm. Maybe an area that's around like yeah. that. But What's the make capacity of the water plant? How much can it make a day? Well, um, <laughs> it's kind of hard to answer because it's a million gallon a day plant. Okay. We're not allowed to take that much out of the river. We're only allowed to take something like 740,000 gallons a day out of the river. Mm-hmm. Uh, we only take out what we need to meet the day's needs to fill up the, to fill up the tanks. And that's why they may start at 5 o'clock in the morning and be done 2 o'clock in the afternoon. They've got that much water already stored up for the next day you know, yeah. that we know... So um, now, if we if we do anything more than let's say we're only allowed, you I have think the we're only allowed eighty percent, and then we'd have to add another filter to the plant. Mm-hmm. But we've got the we've got the space and the connections already. If we do have to add another filter, if we ever decide, but that'd be a large project for us to do that. I'd like to hear again from our water folks at the next meeting okay. to, to kind of dial that in some. Uh, Maybe some of the things that they've done too, and some of the improvements exactly. they've made. Exactly, I'd be interested and, in that too. You know, I want to get a feel that they have ownership in the process, and because that's where it, it just here, comes here. down to the culture, right? If you got the right culture there, they're going to make it happen. If right. not, yeah. because if it's not there, then it's it's lack of ability, and then you can go find somebody else that has the knowledge yeah. to move a team forward that's got good culture. We've, we've got conscientious operators. They, they love Hartford. They do, right, but sometimes, uh, you know, you've got people coming on board, and they learn from the previous ones. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes uh, things that need to be done kind of get forgotten or you know you just and that's why I want them because I want to hear from them what they need from us yeah well I think you're going to find out I'm not scared no (laughs) no no that since George became mayor they've had far more of a listening ear than they've had in a long time Uh, I'm all about that and I think that uh, you know a few short months he's been there and and We've been here two months, mm-hmm. and I think things are moving very well, yeah. and I think it's due to George's leadership and well, his willingness to get in and deal. I don't dig. come by this on my own doing, you know, they tell me that this is what we need to do, you know. <laughs> right. I don't, and I want to make sure but like I said, that they've got the listening like ear. My engineering that they know they got us all here. Yeah. You know, bring it, bring, what can we do for you yeah. to get it going? That, you know, that's another option yeah they're they're i know that they're not averse to the software program yeah. you know uh, but uh, that needs to be they're telling you not me so yeah i just out of curiosity when you all signed up with the rural water for some of that monitoring and everything does rural water do they not have any input on software or different features that they could recommend since that's what they do every day well you're already paying them in a consultant fee this is this is one device that they've come up with that's been recommended by division of water rural water and what this does is this measures the turbidity in the water they can it's portable they can use it here at the plant. They can use it out in the lines. They can, but the turbidity, ha- the more turbid the water is, the more chemicals they have to use. So this is instantaneous reading of what the turbidity is that they can adjust the chemical use right now. 
and not wait till it's processed and say, well, how did this work? You know, will we add this? Did we add enough? Or did because it's already in lines, it's already in the system. Mm-hmm. What this does is to try to immediately give a input, and so that's some of the things that that's one of the things. This in, this instrument costs two thousand one hundred eighty dollars. It's the only thing that go bad on it's a little crystal glass right there. They said if you drop it, it'll break. You know, uh, but this is just. It's got a cigarette lighter plug in to be used in a pickup truck or whatever. It's portable. Let y'all have a look at that. That's one of the things that they would ask. They ask if I'd recommend to you that we purchase. So, and I mean, water, those kind of things. This is that, what our water folks said they need. Yeah. Okay. That's just one of those things that you know they've come up with that is supposed to help with cutting down on. Mm-hmm. Chemical use that we know exactly what needs to be put in, you know, right now instead of waiting till after it's done and then trying to make adjustments too much or too little. Have there been any more of the uh, reporting violations? No. The bars, see, we have uh, Clem Weathington who keeps an eye out for us at the Division of Rural Water. He monitors our reports going in and makes sure that. See, a lot of our violations have been reports not filled in on time or not filled in correctly or something like that. It's more paper mistakes than it was product mistakes. And so that's, uh, he watches out for us and he intercedes on our behalf with the Division of Water in Frankfurt. And so he's got connections up there that has saved us quite a few times with penalties and late late dates that we've sent things in. We're just trying to make the people more responsible down the plant. So we check them, they bring it up here, we check them before we send it in. So am I telling the truth? Pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need any more from me? I mean, I believe so. Mm-hmm. Do you need any more from me? No, I believe? no. Okay. You're excused. <laughs> We want you to get healthy. Oh, well, I do appreciate that. We, we expect you to come in with weights on you. Okay. I got plenty of weight on me, Maryville. That's the problem. Uh, no, I, I said weights. Yeah. I want you to come in with that lead thing around your ankles and your arms and all that. So, I'll tell you what, I'll meet you there. I'll come watch you. <laughs> all right. Oh, yeah, thank you. Excuse me, remember when you get the double room? Yeah. I would have gotten a little wet. It's getting cold out there. Really. See you there. Yeah. Um, so, what is the general consensus of the council regarding the building's offer to cut back on the length of term, cut back on some of the costs if we do it ourselves, things like that, cut back on an employee, half an employee? I recommend that they hit us again with new proposal. With a new proposal? For five years, not a ten okay. year. Under, you know, if we take on a lot of this. Okay. Just as another option, and again, it kind of, it's kind of a motivator. So you're going to make that in the form of a motion? Yes, okay. that's what my motion is. All right. Is there a second to that? Second that. Okay. Any discussion to it? Okay, if you're in favor of that motion, up with your hand. If you're, not, if you're not, up with your hand. Okay. Uh, I'll contact David and tell him to make a new proposal for our next meeting. All right. All right, new business. Um, We have three people in the office who uh, sign or on our signature cards at the banks to sign checks. Um, there are times when I may be gone to vacation, something like that, be gone for a lengthy period of time. If, some, if one of those is sick, we've only got one signator on. So 
Uh, we use usually use two council people that are pretty much uh, handy, pretty avail pretty much available uh, all all days, all hours of the day. Not all hours, but during work hours. So I'd like to recommend that we put uh, Mary Bell and Jerry as the two additional signatories on our checking accounts uh, to sign checks. We hardly ever use them, but there are times. The bank will require us to have a motion to remove Jerry and Tony as well. You have a motion to okay. remove the people, and then All right. the bank will require. Thank you. Then the motion would be that we remove Jerry uh, Scoggins and Tony Ward from the past signature cards and put uh, Mary Bell and Jerry Likens on the new signature cards. Now, if you want to make that into motion, I'll entertain it. If you want somebody else. Make a motion. Okay. Second. Any discussion? I just know that some of you are not available sometimes during the day. Some of you work and do some traveling and things like that. So we felt like these two were the more yeah, home bodies then. Okay. All checks required two signatures. Two signatures. Yeah. Okay, all in favor. Thank you. All right. The next thing is a sanitation truck. <laughs> um, when we got pretty rough shape, man. <laughs> well, a couple of weeks ago, the springs, the rear springs on one side broke. And they hobbled through through the rest of the route. We've got two sets of rear springs over here, Owensboro, West Side Auto Parts, or someplace over there. Brand, I mean, they were new sets of springs. And uh, we put them on ourselves. But then it came in a week or so later and said, well, we've got a weld on the tub because it's starting to come apart. They, you know, we're still able to use the truck, but there's going to come a time when the truck's going to have to be replaced. Uh, out here on the old railroad bed off Oakwood Drive, some of you know where I'm talking about, they're close to Smiley's upholstery shop. We put in a sewer line years ago, and that was funded with the uh, regional wastewater, right? And we've been paying monthly on that to pay that note off. We've got, what, two more payments to make? It's in, it's in April. It's about $4,000 a month, isn't it? Forty-two seventy-five. Okay. A little over $4,000 a month is what we're paying. What I'd like to do is, once we get that note paid off, to take that 4200 or whatever it is a month that we've been paying on that note and start a fund to build up toward purchasing a new garbage truck. The garbage truck we've got now cost, what was it, 59000 59000 back in 2009, I believe, is when it was, something like that. A new one, the garbage trucks that we use are small enough that they don't require a CDL license for our guys to be able to drive. Uh, a new one, that's the largest one under that CDL limit right now costs us $142,000. That's how much they've gone up in basically 10 years. So that's one reason I want to start this fund to try to cut down on the initial investment that we'd have to make in purchasing a new truck when this one becomes inoperable. We probably can put up a surplus property and get just a little bit for it, you know, from we sold the last one for, well, actually, we sold it twice. <laughs> that's a long, that's a long story. Twice. That's a long story. But the uh, second time we sold it, we got more than we did the first time. So it worked out good. <laughs> we paid the first guy off and still had some profit. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, just, it was a humorous situation. <laughs> but uh, sometimes there are people who do buy that surplus property for various reasons. So, Cylinders, tires, springs, things like that. Mm -hmm. They can salvage off of them. 
Well, how long, I mean... How long do I expect it to last? Yes. Mm -hmm. We're not in any hurry to buy the new one. Right, but... But, but yeah. garbage is hard on a truck. Yeah. I mean, all the acids and the liquids and everything that goes in it. Um, right now, I expect it to last another year or two, maybe. I'm hoping. I yeah. My fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, but I can't guarantee it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. We're going to do our best. We we take cylinders. We can get a lot of cylinders reworked. Uh, even end caps, we can get them machined up here at McQuaidy. They do they do some machining up there that we've used them several times and saved a huge amount on buying and having to buy a new cylinder or something like that. So. Yeah. But anyway, I'd like, uh, I'd like, I guess, a motion to say that we st start that diverting that money after the that loans paid off into a fund that will be for the purpose of garbage truck. I'll make that motion. Okay. Second. All right. Uh, any discussion regarding it? That the, that the money comes from the occupational tax fund. Okay, that's where the money does come from. To yeah, the occupational yeah. okay. So it will come out of the occupational tax Okay. Fund. Have you looked into buying a used one from larger cities? Well, a larger city would probably have one that's a CDL, require a CDL driver. Okay, they're, they're like some of these trucks that go down to uh, River Bend. Those are much bigger trucks, and they do require some, an operator to have CDL. We don't have anybody that's got a CDL that could we, could drive that. You know, uh, have we looked into it? If you're buying somebody else's discard. Why are they getting rid of it? Maybe because I just know what the board is wanting to need uh, a bucket truck. Yeah, and I think we, they went down somewhere in uh, okay. Georgia or somewhere. Yeah. And bought one, and it. They've had it now several years, yeah. and it still. What well, bucket good. trucks are different from garbage different trucks. Garbage <laughs> trucks. <laughs> now we're going to divert the whole forty-two hundred into the fund. Yeah. Yes. In two years, that'd be a hundred and hundred thousand dollars. Right. Uh, so that almost. That'd go a long way. What we'd have to borrow would be mm -hmm. right. manageable. This can be like a sub ledger and still stay within the occupational tax fund. You don't want to create an bank account, correct? Right. right. Yeah, so it's just a sub ledger. Yeah, right? it's just a sub. You know, it's bookkeeping is what it is. Yeah, money is still right. there. It's just bookkeeping. That would be my only concern is when the garbage truck is replaced. A lot of times it's just you know I know what ours would be like if we put it up for surplus right. property bid. It, there's but some people might re replace theirs every five years. Right. right. And I also saw a report once that one of the biggest uh, things that is stolen for is the uh, automobile or mechanical stuff. Yeah. Is uh, big garbage trucks like New York City. Yeah. They said the number of them are so stolen every day and taken somewhere else and resold because they bring good money. <laughs> So we say we're going to get one. So you look for us. <laughs> Drive it home. You want us to buy a hot truck from New York? We don't, we tell we don't want to know if it's hot, but we, we don't want to know. Yeah. No, we're painting. Get, get, the, get rid of the bodies out of it, too. Yeah, yeah we don't need those. So, Maribel, first, who second? Who seconded that motion there? I did. Okay, Tony did. Okay, any more discussion? They had to keep the booster seat out of this one for a driver, didn't they? Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I tell you, you said that more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you did. All right. If, if there's no discussion, then all in favor, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, cemetery materials. Um, at Memorial Gardens, we've got, got it finished. The only mm -hmm. thing that we like that we'd like to put in there is two columns, like we had for the small entrance up at Oakwood. Just recently we put two stone columns in front of that gate there. <laughs> just kind of dress it up a little bit. Um, I've had the same person who paid for those columns 
that offered to pay for the labor in putting up these two new columns. So all we'd have to do is buy the materials. The last time we bought materials for those two columns was in the $940 range. Okay, and that includes the stone and all the the concrete for the base and mortar and everything else. The labor for this project would be paid for. Uh, all I need would be uh, permission to go ahead and purchase the materials. They get the rock from, I can't remember, E-Town or someplace like that. It's a company that makes a, uh, I forgot how thick it is, it's, it's rock that's only about, you know, an inch and a half, three inches, something like that thick, yeah. and then I thought he did a good job when he did the, the ones up by the small entrance mm -hmm. at Oakwood, so we'd like to put those in front of the gates. I don't know if y'all have been by there to see the new gates, but we got a write-up in the county paper today, and yeah. I thought that was... Yeah, seen it, it was very nice. It was some nice well, you know, the council, previous council was the one responsible yeah. for that. I got uh, some credit that I shouldn't have. It's just the previous council that has been the one credited with that. But I'd like permission to go ahead and purchase the necessary rock materials to create two posts, just like the ones that small entrance to Rockwood. So. Make a motion to get it. I second that. Okay. That money, too, would come out of the occupational tax funds where the last... Uh, all the work up there has come from. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Discussion about the uh, motion to purchase that rock. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Uh, sewer lines. I've talked to some of you to get an okay so we can go ahead and start on it. Uh, we had a request to uh, some people have purchased some property up there. They could put in. They could locate the house where they could put in a sewer system with the lateral lines, a septic tank and lateral lines. Uh, from Zimmerman Street, this is on Taylor Avenue. Taylor Avenue is up close to the old slaughterhouse. Okay. Phillips Avenue was the one that would run into the slaughterhouse. Okay, the next street down toward Clay Street is Taylor. Okay. Uh, is that you know, where you're talking about that trailer oil? Yeah. 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 But that's, right. that's over across. Yeah. 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 Across the ditch. Yeah. Across the ditch is right. Yeah. Um, Ms. Wilma Wilson has a house on that street. <laughs> She's got a septic tank and lateral lines. A lot of people don't know that. We've yeah. got those situations in Hartford because there never was a sewer line put in there. Yeah. I'd like to put in 200 feet of 8 inch sewer line. They'd have to put in a manhole connected to the other manhole by they'd have to drill into that manhole to accommodate the 8 inch because I, I'm not sure how big the manhole they've got, how big a line it it's already there, how big it accommodates. But they'd have to do some drilling to make it, bringing it out to make it bigger. So it's putting in a manhole, 200 feet of sewer line, and then fitting it into another existing manhole. Uh, it's $15,500 for eight inch line. And that way we would have a big enough line to uh, accommodate if there's some more developing that would take place there because there's some property around there that there's talk about it being developed with uh, house duplexes, things like that. So I, I know I've already got four of sales paid, so can I get a motion to make it official that we do that? I'll make a motion to go with it. All right. Project. I second it. All right. Discussion about the motion. I, matter of fact, I'd like to see Hartford encourage more people to get off the septic. Yeah. Thanks. We don't need any in the city period. Uh, I think when they ask, we should let yeah. them do it. That's occupational tax there too, because yeah. it's yeah. because it is infrastructure. We just need to make sure they're put in properly, and we don't have to redo them in a few yeah. years. Well, did you say it was a six-inch line? Eight inch. Eight inch. Okay. Yeah. They had an offer for six inch, but it was like four hundred dollars cheaper, and mm -hmm. it's, that pretty limits. That six inch does a lot of limiting. Of what you're 
<laughs> this way we can take in. I think there's probably going to be two houses that will go to this line, but and there could be across the street, across the diagonal corner. Mm -hmm. There could be development there that we could tie into this <coughs> one line here. Um, and it may encourage more development, really, to know that it's yeah. water. I'm thrilled that somebody's doing because last year yeah. just, last year we had a problem with groundhogs up there, you know, and this is gonna, I think drive them out. Mm -hmm. All right. Any more discussion? If you're in favor of that, thank you. All right. Um, we've already talked about the alleyway on Taylor Street. We've closed mm -hmm. that. Um, the Walker Street property. David Coleman came to me and asked me to bring this before the council. <coughs> uh, does everybody know where his church is up there to court, right across from Bellin Park? His little church. Okay, he's got a parking lot there. There's some property up on top of the, the hill right there that, well, he says it's just some things that they, people on Sunday don't want to see. Okay. <laughs> he wanted to put up a fence up there at the, right next to that. When he got to investigating, and the city of Hartford owns a little rectangle there that's one-sixth of an acre, okay? Uh, I'm not sure what the dimensions are for it, but it's not big enough hardly for us to be able to do anything with. Uh, he wants to, his church wants to purchase that property and extend their parking lot and put up a fence at the very end of it to shield them from the people up there. So he asked if I would approach you all about selling that piece of property to the church. I didn't even know we said he owned the property there, but I don't know why we wouldn't. I mean, a sixth of an acre. Yeah, point, part, zero point one six, six acres. Acre. Ain't big enough for nothing. Is certainly. It? It what, uh, ain't big enough for nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's, it's more narrow than it is long as not. You know, it's. Uh, about like this table here, you know, it's not. Mm -hmm. yeah, I hate to get rid of that much property. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, have a road I think before we can offer to him, in fairness to the citizens of Hartford, we need to have it appraised. You know, yeah, of course. Right. So if it's our RQ, I'll go ahead and proceed with the appraisal and bring it back to the council and see if y'all are agreeable to that. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right, the last thing right there, well, this list is... It says water pump and sewer meter. Uh, one of the things that the water department has approached me about is the sewer pump right down here on Center Town Road as you're going out the very last one. That's what we use to pump, or to put the regional wastewater uses to pump our sewage down to their plant. And then it's metered down there. Well, they've got lines that run across fields and under roads and things like that that I'm satisfied that's for some of our leakage, our I and I is coming in. It's saying their lines, but we're paying for it. What we'd like to do is put a meter up on our line before it goes into that pump. They can put a sound meter, which You've got your pipe, and, and there's three sensors that are put around the outside of it. It doesn't go inside, you know, which would cause blockage and cause problems. But then this is going to measure the flow that's going out, and we can compare our reading with what they say that's their reading is. And we can say, well, this is what our reading is. If there's anything between here and there, that's your all's line. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. The uh, the estimate on that meter is about fourteen thousand dollars. Okay. Our sewer bill this past month, what they initially sent us was a hundred thousand uh, dollars. They are granting us uh, a, a break, and it ended up being about seventy nine thousand dollars. Okay. Uh, they have done that for year or two they've given us that break on the rate uh, and it's been extremely helpful it's helped us build up a little bit of a reserve but when you have a bill like 79,000 it's 
takes that reserve down pretty quick. Mm -hmm. What we're hoping is that this would be an argument for us to say, fix your lines so that we're not paying for that. Okay. We realize we've got I and I, but I don't think all the I and I's in the city limits of Hartford. I think some of us down in those lines. Does it gauge actually the amount that the goes through there? How many gallons go And they there? would have to what, go down there and read it every so often or get Well, it? we yeah, I think you could read it. Uh, of course, you want to read it right at the same time that they're reading their meter. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I think it behooves us to do, you know, not necessarily a daily check, but at least but, a weekly yeah. check on a reading. See yeah. what our, yeah. Now, we've had some things get into our sewer lines that have ended up in their pumps. And so far, what it's done is it's broken shafts. And uh, one of them was a clay tile that got in there, and another one was a piece of uh, PVC pipe or something that got in there and wedged the, the pump and ended up breaking the shaft. Mm -hmm. This happened twice, and both times that this happened, the company has stood behind the shaft. But they said the next time it happens, they're going to have somebody down here to see when they pull that pump out and if it is that we're going to have to replace it but there's not anything we can do to stop that we're just, you know we can't put up any kind of a, a screen or anything like that to catch big chunks because it creates a blockage in the line so yeah i'm just giving you a warning but at okay. least we can because those pumps and those shafts aren't cheap no no about twenty thousand. i think yeah okay but anyway, I'd, I'd like for us to consider putting, purchasing that meter and putting on our line. If you're, like I said, it's about 14000 the money would come out of occupational tax since it is uh, infrastructure that we're dealing with. George, before the council changed, didn't we talk about that before? I thought we already decided to well, put a meter on it. We had talked about doing it, but I don't know that we acted on going ahead with the okay to purchase one. I, we had talked about it, but I don't remember. Do you remember? There's not a motion. Huh? You don't have a motion for it. We didn't have a motion before. We talked about it. Yeah, I knew that, that we talked yeah. about it. But I think we're, we've now reached a point <laughs> where we feel like it, $14,000 would probably save us some money in the short run, really. Could pay for it in one month. It might yeah. do it. You know. Is the yeah, uh, you never know. The technology that we would use is it the same down there? That reads. I think they use something like a sonic meter. I'm, I don't think they have uh, a, a flow meter in the line. I don't think they have that. I think it's, it's. I think it's similar to what they use. Yeah, I would advise if when we've done that in the past, we use the same exact device. Yeah. That way yeah. there's no question on yeah. it's the same reliability. Um, they could uh, Kevin can probably tell you that. He, yeah, he can. Huh? And uh, I think our fellows even know what they use. Well, yeah, I'm sure. probably do. Uh, but I would entertain a motion whether you want to purchase one or not. I'll make a motion we put a meter on it purchase one. Okay. That's second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Another issue down at the plant is this. <laughs> I'm trying to get all of these. Yeah, we need to talk about that one too if we want to purchase that. Um, when the water river gets high, trash collects around our intake. The intakes work good if the water levels down. We don't have a lot of trash building up around it. That works fine. But when it does get up high, we have a four-inch pump. It's a diesel engine. I mean, they put a suction line in, fired up. It's hooked to a line that goes directly to the plant, hooked to a fitting that goes to the plant. And it pumps the water just directly out of the river up there. And so called a waste pump because it'll handle debris up to three inches. Okay. 
I don't know about fish, but it'll have <laughs> the brain. But anyway, it will go bad at times. You know, like any other piece of machinery, there's repairs. Well, just recently, there were two bearings on a shaft that went bad. So the company that we go to is over at Evansville. We take our machine over there and we rent one of their machines to do our work. $1,800 a week. Phew. Okay. What I've suggested to the people at the plant, and they're agreeable, they think it's a, they think it's a wise idea. We purchase our own machine for a reserve. That way if our basic machine goes down, has to be repaired, we take it over there. I mean, they're not in a hurry to repair our machine because we got, their rental. we got their rental, okay? So I've examined, looked for some uh, pumps, and we would try to more closely examine these. But we can get a six-inch pump that'll pump up to 1,000 gallons a minute. Our, our need is somewhere in the, the pump that goes into the plant right now is somewhere in the 500 50 to 575 gallon per minute rate flow. We can get a six inch pump that will pump up to a thousand gallons a minute, which means we won't have to run it at capacity uh, for somewhere in the neighborhood of nine to ten thousand dollars. As a one of them I looked at has uh, got a Honda V twin uh, that drives it as gas which is the worst thing probably, but uh, you know, if it's not being used, it's stored inside the plant. Uh, but it, a couple of years ago, this company over in Evansville received $125,000 from the city of Hartford for one year's rental and repair. Yeah. How much? Wasn't it 125000 a few years ago? For one year. For one year. They'd pay us well, that too, they? Well, at $1,800. $1,800 a week, yeah. A week. That's what our rent I mean, is right now. We're, we're looking at 5000 a month right there. Yeah. What normally happened, too, is when the pump came back, repaired it, worked it, worked. They did it that one day, and then immediately they had to come back and get it. Get it, and you had to start your rental again. This way, there's no incentive for them to keep our our pump over there. Right. I mean, they take it, they get it in, get it out, because there's no reason for them to keep it, you know. I mean, Jeez. another way they'd have a reason to keep it. Yeah. I'm not saying that they did that underhanded, right. but they right. probably were stacked up with other yeah. work, too. How often do, right. you, do, do you have to use that pump? When the water's high. Just when them water's high, yeah. so, so all year. <laughs> well, here lately. Sometimes, sometimes they're able to get uh, water out of our regular intake, but whenever it gets clogged up, they have to go to this reserve pump. You know, they have to go to this out exterior pump, this outside pump. Is this the new one you're discussing? Gas. This one, the one I looked at was gas. Yeah. The good. ones that have diesel engines, of course, they're going to be about six or seven thousand dollars higher. And you're also, after hours, going to be driving to Beaver Dome to get the diesel. Yeah. Don't burn to get it. <laughs> Do what now? And you have, would have to get that diesel from Beaver Dome because you can't get it after hours in Hartford, and that's what mm -hmm. we've done in the past. So well, it just doesn't make sense to pay eighteen hundred dollars a week for a nine thousand dollar equipment. And like I said, equipment. you know, this, these are. These are just some that I'm going through, uh, looking for it on the internet, you know, the different types of pumps. Yeah. Uh, these were, right now, the four inch is what we're using. Uh, if we go to a six inch pump, uh, they'd have to have either an adapter or some new line, you know, uh, both suction mm -hmm. line and uh, delivery line. But uh, that's a lot cheaper than several weeks of $1,800 yeah. a week. 
But that way we've got our own spare. Yeah. And we can use it anytime. We don't have to wait for them to bring it over or anything like that. You know, we'd have it available right away. It's, it's uh, a pump. It's on wheels. You know, you just put it behind the truck, pull it down there, back it in, hook it up, fire it up. So. As long as they know they emptied the gas out when they go to store it. What I'd like is just uh, permission to spend a little more time looking at at uh, these pumps and. Uh, <coughs> I don't I mean we so. need to buy a pump instead of paying that much rental on one. Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. You know, it's just another cost-saving issue we're trying to incorporate. And there's not like another vendor either because we've already checked into that. Yeah. If we could switch to a different vendor, they pretty much got it now. I think you should go ahead and look, and if you find one, buy it. Okay. Well, then, if it's agreeable with what the water plant thinks is sufficient to, then can I get Serve a motion to... I'll make a motion. ...with a maximum of $10,000 to come out of occupational tax infrastructure. Day. Okay, any discussion? Okay, if you're in favor of that, I put it in. Okay, thank you. I've been, I've been looking at new sewing machines, and so you just spent money, and I'm happy now. Okay. Well, okay, now what about this little machine here? Are you in favor of that? or I mean, it's... Most certainly, yeah, I think it, 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 yeah. it becomes recommended by the Division of Rural Water, and so I think it's something that would... Plus, that's what the guys have asked for, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. I'm all about that. So, can I get a motion for that purchase? I'll make a motion. I'll second. Okay, second here. There. Discussion? Up. Uh, thank you. Uh, okay, they thank you because um, they're trying to find ways that they can improve the operation down yeah. there. And they, that was one that came recommended to them. Okay, um, I told you about the, the tank problem and I had been in contact with the engineer. Do you want me to go ahead and tell him to start a preliminary engineering report? Uh, he sent some, a contract for us. Uh, he said if, no, he's, if you go by the USDA rural development fee schedule, uh, like the preliminary documents would probably be, uh, would likely exceed over $30,000. Uh, and he said, additionally, we typically see a consultant billing $15,000 for a preliminary engineering report. Engineering inspection would likely exceed 30000 So in total, he said that what they've outlined would probably exceed $75,000. Okay, his contract that he gave us says to do a preliminary engineering report would cost mm, $20,300, um, and that would take it all away to, I have to read all these. They would coordinate the site survey for the existing tank if necessary, they coordinate the geotechnical engineering for the proposed construction to see if it, you know, if it can, if the grounds can stand up to it, which I think it probably could if it's been dealing with a million gallons of water. Uh, preliminary engineering report to alter it to 450,000 gallons. Development contract documents for the construction of the proposed elevated tank. Assist in the Kentucky Division of Water Construction <coughs> approval for the tank. He would go to bat for us before. <coughs> We've got to take a proposal to the Water Management Council at GRAD. They have to okay it before GRAD can then send the proposal to whoever they give to supplies with the grant and the funds. Anyway, he's doing quite a bit there. Um, that part of it would be the $20,300. Um, Will you have to entertain bids about that being over twenty thousand dollars? Probably would. We'd have to bid this out. <laughs> um, 
I'm just trying to tell you, yeah, what he's what his prices are right there. We already have his basically his bid. Um, to uh, provide assistance during the bidding process, such as the recommendation for award, provide contract administration services during the construction. He said that that would. You know, they would provide services for up to six months. I don't think it'd take that long to do it. I hope it doesn't take that long to do it. We can't stand six months of that tank being down. And then uh, he said that would be another $3,500, you know, for after the bids are okayed and construction starts, then it would be another $3,500 about. So anyway, that's what his bid is. Um... I would like to bid this project out, though, and see, because it, it's going to be approximately, he has made a $300,000 project, and you have to start somewhere. I think this is a badly needed project for us to get our water system more into what we need instead of what somebody sold us a long time ago. Has Grad been approached about any of this? I mean, is, oh. there's not been any lead bark in it. Um, but it's like she said, you know, I can't go into this contract without it be bid. He knows it's got to be bid. Yeah. Well, I think it's back. Yeah, he's over 20000 yeah. yeah. Well, and then the other thing as far as funding until the water project as far as your technical like KIA funds or loans until that the current project is completely done I mean I, I know it's, yeah, physic it's physically done but paperwork is not done we've got, not to, we got to finish this other yeah. close this other deal out because you only have one project right. KI, right. Kentucky Infrastructure uh, Administration I guess Anyway, you know about what it's going to take. Do you want to pursue that idea and bid the project, or do you want to keep the tank we got and deal with it like it is? I think we need to fix our tank where it would be usable for us and not be wasting so much water. Yeah. yeah. That's a big cause of a lot of our flushing. Uh, a lot of our flushing is because of that. It's also because of the dead end lines that we've got. We have our back flushers on the ends of a lot of our dead end lines, but we still probably would have that because a dead end line, you're going to end up with problems. You know, it's, also, it's, that, it's that particular tank where a lot of the. Do what? That particular tank is part of the problems of the HIA yeah. violations. But do you want me to go ahead and pursue this with a asking for bids or not? Yeah, I think we I should. I think we should. Ask for bids. Can I have a motion then? I make the motion to get bids on. Okay. Second. 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 All right. Any discussion? Lift a hand. Thank you. Uh, one other thing. Uh, catch you up on our sidewalk project. You noticed that we've started on that. Um, I'm really excited about what this is going to turn out to be because I think it's going to, people are just going to really be in awe by the time it finally gets finished. Uh, just the way it's going to dress up downtown. We had a problem today um, in front of Capers. Uh, they pulled uh, they pulled concrete up, removed the concrete, and there was a hole. And looked down the hole, and there's a room down at the bottom. <laughs> and the front of Capers, it comes out underneath the sidewalk, roughly three to four feet. And nobody knew the room was there. I guess people knew the room was there, but didn't know how it was going to affect putting in a sidewalk above it. When you take it out, there's a hole there. So the engineers have been over to look at it. It's really 
it's going to be fixable. It's going to be a change order to our contract. I don't think it's going to be very much. The, the way it is now, um, what we've got is just a little small room there in front of Capers. There is a solid partition for part of the wall, and then you got two little side rooms. It looks something like that. Okay, here's the street out here. Capers is back here. That's their basement. That's okay, the there's sidewalk. two little side rooms there. <laughs> That's under the sidewalk. That's under the sidewalk. Interesting. Because this is, this is the front of their building right here. So that's underneath their sidewalk. You do have this strength. They right. think it's solid. They right. think it's solid. <laughs> but there's two little doors here that have openings. There's no doorway. It's just a, it's a doorway, no doors. And what they're going to do is just simply put corrugated metal perpendicular to the road. <laughs> you know, and then pour concrete over that, which is it's done all the time. Trouble is, there's no support here, so they had to call the owner, and he's he's very agreeable to whatever they've got to do to to bridge this these openings so that they can put the corrugated metal in, and then they can pour the concrete over that. But that's totally unexpected and no telling what else they'll find under the streets of Hartford, you know, on the sidewalks. I of think Hartford. it's just downright exciting. I do, uh, <laughs> there may be some history to that. And would and there's around? got to be a, like I said, I and see Al Capone, Al Capone Al Capone store is those good for you know about do what now no. It might have been a coal bin or something like yeah, that. You know, that they just they had at one time. Yeah, at one time they, they, they probably had a trap door. They just shovel coal down in those bins and they shoveled it out of that into their premises. Oh, you can in make it more market, romantic than a, that. Uh, there's a coal chute look like sticking out there in front of our building. The reason, uh -huh. yeah. But they didn't find anything under your. <laughs> Should have called Geraldo. Yeah, there you go. I think it's funny. I mean, it it is surprising, but you're right. There's not much telling what we could find under that's the city of Hartford. Okay. Uh, that's all I have. If y'all have something that you want to bring up, now would be a good time to do it. Oh, wait a minute. I've got one other thing. <laughs> I thought I'd done this way and went over this way. I put one here in the middle. When we were over at the KLC meeting, uh, this I was talking with this young lady out there, Jessica Springs. Uh, she represents this company, and what they do is they they go on to these old city sidewalks like we have, and wherever there's a trip hazard, <laughs> they'll go through and they will saw that trip hazard off at a 1 and 12 slope and they remove that that trip hazard then and so what you'll see there there are some diagrams and there are some pictures of uh, where they have earmarked various things like a quarter inch trip hazard a half inch trip hazard up to two inch trip hazard the, the quarters are the yellow dots the halves are the one one half inch to one half inch to two inch trip hazard. I think the uh, highest one we've got is like point five four inches or something like that, I believe. That's what I read there. But what they've listed are areas that are not receiving new sidewalk. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, the other side of Main Street. Coming up Center Street, I think there's one behind, on Apple Alley here behind the courthouse, and then they're getting all of this up from the library, the jail up library, all the way up to Walnut Street, I believe is what they've got there. They have it listed. Uh, they will take out under one plan. They take out the quarter inch, which is. The minimum, they take out that quarter inch up to two inch 
cut it out. They don't grind it off. It's, it's, it's a saw that comes in and cuts it off sideways hmm. and leaves a smooth surface. If you grind it, it's going to leave some ridges, some grid in it. Uh, Trying to think what else. It tells you how many linear feet that they're going to under two different plants. One of the plants yeah, takes care of a quarter inch on. and up. The other plant takes care of half inch and up. Okay. There's two different plants listed there. Keep turning. I can't turn the pages. I don't know what she printed this thing off. There you Hard go. Stuff. There's your two plants right there. Yeah. What is there, about $600 difference in the two? Uh -huh. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Uh, so I just I throw that out there if you're interested in. Well, what does that do to the stability of of the concrete? I mean, because if that's bucked up, then that means that there's soil coming well, up close to the tree root bushes. Yeah. You no, know, this this is over here. There's no trees over on this side. Oh well, trees. that's true. There isn't. But is it? It's just like this. If there was a a half inch. Then they just go in there and they cut that down right there. Well, you're yeah. only going back maybe, I don't know, 1 in 12. Yeah. You go back 6 inches as far back as that cut would go. Didn't you say that slope also was ADA compliant? Well, yeah, well, I mean, all of your handicap ramps yeah. and everything are 1 in 12. And so, you know, it's not like it's creating a, a jump or anything like that. It's yeah. creating a smooth transition. What's the city's liability if somebody trips? Yeah, yeah, it's a testing of our insurance is what it is, you know. That's the worst thing it is. So the city's case. liable? Oh, yeah. 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 Where are those spots again? Well, they're all over. <laughs> <laughs> they're just going to all over. So it looks you like... You better be, you better be injured pretty good yeah. before... Because we got some tough <laughs> insurance <laughs> <laughs> testers. Yeah. But, so one uh, one option does everything. One option does half inch and the the worst half inch. And up. Yeah, but if you notice, they charge different rates too. Well, uh, yeah, for six hundred dollars more, they're just going to fix it all. Yeah, that's the whole goal. This was fifteen fifteen dollars a foot. This is twenty dollars a foot. We want you to take the fifteen dollar a foot because that gives us six hundred dollars more. Because and take it out a quarter inch. You only go back about three inches. Mm -hmm. You know the cut would only be three inches. It wouldn't take me time yeah. long to shave that off. So I just don't. I don't know if you're interested in it. I'll contact her, and you know we'll set up. What are we wanting to make make it available for easy walking in Hartford? <laughs> I, but, for one, coming out of Capers, every time I walk out of there, I'm like... <laughs> oh, that, that sounds straight from <laughs> Harvard. Right there it was bad from there in yeah. front of that. It was. Uh -huh. There's no comparison well. to the cost price if you're talking about <coughs> well, placing. When yeah. they were the first project for sidewalk, the number was unreal. Yeah. And we had to down that project. Well, tell me <coughs> something. Why did, the, why did we put those rails up here at Clay and Union? Yeah. That has been a sore spot with me. Oh, I mean, they put handicap, handicap rails, okay. and there's no sidewalk. Yeah, but that's that was part of the project. It was a safe schools project, and that was probably, I don't know, but I'm saying it's probably part of the conditions of that project. You know, that there'll be some rails, I think, down here once we finish it. Well, we're not doing this side of the street. I was trying to think if they had some in the initial plans for the sidewalk project, if they had anything on this side of the street, which they did. There were supposed to be some rails right there uh, by Kathy Allen's store were on Union Street, you know. There mm -hmm. were some rails on that sidewalk. It was just a safety factor. Mm -hmm. That's ADA. Yeah, Those I think are $10,000. Well, I am just so glad since there's no place for them to go. I mean, it, it makes sense yeah. to me. But if you notice all of our crossings that were part of that project, when you come down to enter in the street, they've got those, yeah, those, the, those the, bubble uh, yeah, right. strips, you mm -hmm. know, that tell mm -hmm. a blind person, you know, that you're right. leaving the sidewalk. Until he starts up Clay Street there by those handicaps, and it doesn't tell him anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I, I never understood that. Okay. <laughs> it looks nice, though, doesn't it? No. It looks tacky. Oh, they're well built. Oh, well, I have to take that into consideration. Okay. <laughs> Moving right along, we're back to this issue. Yeah. Would you like to pursue this, or you just want me to save this, these? Is this not something that men working for the city can't do? We don't have those saws. But what they do over here, what's been done around the courthouse, is like a, there's a place over there that was about two inches, and they took... Uh, can't grind it up? Well, they took the blacktop, you know, like you fill a patch in your driveway. Mm -hmm. They took black pop, blacktop patch and put in there. And tried to smooth it. <laughs> Made it smooth. You know, you're not going to stub your toe on it. You might... Uh, Break an ankle, but... But that's, you... not, our, that's not our sidewalk. <laughs> that's, right. so that's That's county <laughs> sidewalk, so they can do whatever they want to. And this would cover just the rest of the downtown area that... It covers, yeah, it'll cover Main Street, Center Street, one place on Apple Alley. This right here in front of uh, the City Hall was part of the original project to be replaced all the way down to Clay Street. Yeah. And they were going to put in a sidewalk on Walnut Street up here all the way down to Clay Street. Mm -hmm. And that'll be a secondary project that we'll tackle you know, in a year or two. Okay. We'll go ahead and finish that initial project, but... Uh, we did have a complaint during the Christmas <coughs> festival of sidewalk issue. You remember an individual was complaining about the problem with the sidewalk down there. Uh oh. I don't know. I didn't pay attention to them. Okay. What about the <laughs> sidewalk on Union uh, Street I next to Kathy Allen? Pardon? Next to Kathy Allen on... Uh, yeah. Union Street, are we going to do anything to that? Uh, don't believe it's in this project here. They did. They tackled the worst looking places, I think. Well, that that's, might, that's pretty bad, bad up through there. Okay. We might uh, approach her about uh, seeing if we can add that to it. When you get on up there behind the Methodist Church, part of that wall fell down and it's. Yeah. It, yeah, I started to say, what are you going to do about those walls like that? Well, see, that was part of the original sidewalk project was to get, not, get both sides of Union Street, which meant that that retaining wall behind the Methodist Church, that whole block, that all that was going to be replaced. Well, what about up there on Perry and Colleen's house? Yeah. It's falling over, too. Yeah, all that, all that up Does the landowner not have any responsibility in that? Do what now? Does the landowner not have any responsibility in those retaining walls like that? I don't know. You'd have to ask a lawyer. I'm not sure what... Well, I don't think they cut down the notch out of this bank there to put the sidewalk in. I'd say the city or somebody paid for that when it's put in. Yeah, I'm not sure if, that's, I don't think if those did. retaining walls are ours or theirs. I don't know. I'd have to see. I don't know. Uh, do you want to pursue this or... Where's this company? For... I'm not sure. I don't remember. It doesn't I'm, say I was it was their I'm sorry. I was, I was looking uh, for their address. Got their phone number and everything up here, but... Uh, I don't think it's too poor, like Hopkinsville or something worse. Yeah, I believe that's where it was, Hopkinsville. I, I mean, I think it's a good idea to probably address it, but it might be a local company that we could patron. Uh, I mean, you probably can get a local company to do some grinding. I don't know if there's anybody else that does the sewing, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I've not had anybody approach me about it. And usually I get approached about a lot of things. <laughs> I mean, from other companies. You know, yeah, right, right, right. We want to sell you this, we want to sure. sell you that. Yeah. yeah. I don't have a problem with it. I mean, I'm... Yeah, I think we know not cheaper than replacing them or anything else. Well, this is infrastructure. We could always, you know, take the money out of the occupational mm -hmm. tax like what we used to do with these kind of situations. And what was the price of doing that? 39 
something. 39, 39. 33. Yeah, 34, 75 cents. Yeah, I was presuming that was one y'all wanted to do was the, the more expensive one. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't because it, it takes in all the quarter inch cracks as well. Yeah, I think we were to do it. Yeah. Well, do I have a motion then? I make the motion that we ground all the rough places in the sidewalk out. <laughs> The ones that they've suggested. Yeah, the ones they've suggested. I'll, I'll talk to her about, I think it's this one right here. Option A. Talk about Crazy. Option, option A, a. Is what you're talking about. Yeah. Option A. Option A, that's the, that's the one that does the quarter inch up to two inches. Yeah, A. I'll second it. Okay. Any more discussion? All right, all in favor? Okay, thank you. All right, I think that's the last thing I've got, so... If y'all have anything you'd like to bring up, then you need these back. No, yeah. not really. You brought up an interesting I topic earlier. I won't we'll spend a lot of time on it so we can wrap it up. Building this building that up when we get but when we talk about buying a new what? truck, what? Yeah. do we have a? I don't which know. Maybe think of, what is our maintenance plan for our rolling stock for the city? <laughs> We roll them till the wheels fall off. Okay. Of them. <laughs> and then we look for something used. Right. Blow them. So I didn't know if there was a something like a well policy that they the fire not the fire department the fire department just got a new pickup truck. Mm -hmm. it, they went from a quarter ton to a three quarter. I mean half ton to a three quarter ton mm -hmm. because the trailer they were trying to pull with the brush truck just wouldn't it wasn't it was tail wagging the dog. Right. So we went through that. The police department is going to ask for, we've tried, excuse me, we've tried to replace a cruiser every other year, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, brand new police cruisers, we can get somewhere in the $34,000 range, okay? We buy, you know, through state bid. Uh, they're going to ask for one to be included in this next year's budget, mm -hmm. which is, uh, I think, very reasonable. Um, the other trucks, like the the water trucks, you know, the collection and distribution trucks, uh, they're really not in bad shape. Uh, we've got one that's losing a little oil. We have to. He keeps an eye on, on that oil level. He knows it's going to lose some. But everything we bought for them has always been been a used truck, mm -hmm. you know. Um, well, you've heard the pardon? term "drive it like you stole it" instead yeah. of "drive it like you own it." Uh, yeah, that's that's my that's where I'm driving towards. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we have a utility truck that's probably our worst truck right now. They only take it out whenever we've got a leak. It's got all of. Right. Leak equipment on it. Uh, these pickup trucks that we drive, they don't, they've got a few things on them, but the main utility truck. Uh, so sometimes we go to get in it and the battery's dead or something like right. that, you know. But well, the whole point, you know, take care of equipment and take care of you. So kind of if we keep up on the, yeah. you know, the PMs on it, then of course they last longer. So. I didn't know what the oversight was for that kind of thing as well. I know we talked a lot about the water right. oversight. Rolling stock is a huge expense as well. Yeah. Um, if we find a good buy sometimes on a truck, you know, used pickup truck, uh, we bought one from Jeff, didn't we? Mm -hmm. That red pickup truck. And also Brent's uh, Cruiser. Brent's Cruiser. I remember we bought, it was not new. We bought it from someone else. Yeah. It was like they usually try to keep their eyes out for things, don't they? Yeah. And they hear about them. I was just wondering about keeping up with the maintenance of them, how we track that stuff. Well, we do We do the, our own maintenance. Jason does all of mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. maintenance on it. A lot of our maintenance on our fire trucks, you know, so we do that in-house. just a question I had. Ain't nothing on Yeah, we do that in-house. Yeah. But uh, they, these are getting some miles on of course they're just driven right around here we don't take sure. them out of town and um, you know if one breaks down it's not very far away from rescue right. so that's true but the the worst truck i think that we've got right now is probably the utility truck 
They're, they had a utility truck down in front of Paxton Mall for sale for a while. It was a white, it had the, mm -hmm. the you know, cool the boxes and everything. Compartments on the side, yeah. things like that. It's about like what we've got up here, except, it, you know, of course it's new. And I thought about trying to see what they wanted for that, but uh, I, I don't know, I'm pinching as many pennies as I can, so right. <laughs> I'll wait till something falls apart before we start <laughs> We've got we've got quite a few trucks that we pick up trucks. What is it, about six or so? Count water and maintenance. I don't know. We're we're in that probably half a dozen trucks is what we've got. So. I know we had quite a few because I usually pass about three going from my house to work. <laughs> I only <laughs> live three blocks like away. <laughs> That's the same one going around Dude, the block. Yeah. Right now. Wave it in <laughs> okay. Do you all have anything that you all want to bring before the council tonight? Anything else? What was that deal? Alan Maddox wanted to get a city of building. Well, what we rather than us taking it and then having to deal with its condition, we're trying to find somebody to take it off. We'll act as a middleman and try to. Uh, we've shown it to two different people. And they thought it was going to cost too much to. Well, that's why I was there. You know something wrong there, Alan Maddox. I'm going to give you nothing. Well, of course, he hadn't used it for years, but uh, it. The roof, it needs a new roof on it. That's yeah, it's a little over here on Center yeah. Street. Uh, it needs a new roof. Uh, <laughs> the back office is, is so leaky that it's probably got grass growing in that <laughs> or something like that. So it's not grass, it's more, it might be moss or something like that. Uh, it would have to be remodeled because it's got a lot of walls in it that would need to be, if you were going to make it into an eating establishment or something like that, you'd have to knock the walls out. I mean, it's, probably they've looked at it. They, it. He thought it was about 3,000 square feet. I may be counting the base, but I think that probably the upper floor What's really usable is probably about 1,500 square feet. Is that where Walter Katina's office was, or is that the building next to it? Uh, I think it's where Walter's was. It's got that brick front. It's got the yeah. little window up mm -hmm. here that yeah, runs like this. Yeah. I mean, it's a good location. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a basement under it. He's got some things stored there. Is that basement dry? Uh, haven't been uh, in it, uh, that's uh, what I can tell you. We're going to, uh, next week, put a add the paper that we're going to publish uh, delinquent taxpayers. Um, put that ad in next week, and then we'll actually put the actual listing of the people the following week. And we have to do it for like three weeks. Either we, there's two different ways of doing it. We we can either put a small ad in there, say we're going to do it, and in the next three weeks do it, or we put a half page ad in that says we are going to publish this we the delinquent payers taxes, and then we print it one week, but then we have to put it on the internet. And we have to update it weekly for how long? I don't remember how long it is. Anyway, we decided it'd be easier for us, cheaper probably in the long run. Put a small ad next week, run the other one three weeks, hmm. uh, make adjustments as people pay. We call people and remind them that they have paid. Some people just overlook it, forget it. Some people, a lot of people, are waiting for their tax returns. That's why we're waiting so late to do this right now. To get people to file their taxes, give them a chance to file their taxes and get the returns back from the IRS. I don't know of anything else to tell you, so if y'all don't have anything, I'll entertain a motion we adjourn. I'll make a motion we adjourn. Okay, second. Second. All in favor? Any discussion? All in favor, okay. Thank you all. Oh. Meeting, but we got through a whole lot.